Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to understand the common constant method also known as a pooled ordinary least square method in panel data. The estimation of the panel data regression model depends on the assumptions we make about the intercept, the slope coefficients and the error terms. Depending upon this, the linear panel data models can be estimated using three different methods. One, common constant. Second, allowing for the fixed effects. Third, allowing for the random effects. In the case of common constant method, it estimates a common constant alpha for all cross sections, that is, common constant for all the countries. Practically, the common constant method implies that there are no differences between the estimated cross sections and it is useful under the hypothesis that the data set is a priori homogeneous. That is, when we have collected the data, we assume that the entire data is coming from the same group, which is homogeneous. So all high income countries are European Union countries. We'll just take a very simple example to explain that what do I mean by common constant method. So in this example, we are having a student the test is there, study time is there, and test grade is there. Now, we want to see the effect of study time and study time on the test grades which the students will, will get. But we will completely ignore the student and which test I am talking about. So when I am running such type of analysis, it is known as a common constant method. The theoretical formulation for this model will be y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus error term. You can see here we have not we have not considered here any student name or the time here. So the test grade is equal to the constant plus beta 1 that is a core that is a slope into the study time plus the error term. Now to introduce the effect of student that may be that the test grades are dependent depend on the student also. So I will introduce the concept of dummies, the dummy variable. So wherever, say for example, the student Joe is present, it will be indicated by 111. Wherever a student Sue is present, it will be indicated by 111. The absence in a particular category will be indicated by 000. We will not give any uh, any coding to the reference category. So if, it means that if there are four students, we will make three dummies. If there are three tests, we will make two dummies. The reason for this is that if you include all of them in your re regression model, we will fall into the dummy variable trap. And therefore, to avoid it, one of the student becomes a reference category and one of the tests becomes a reference category. Now, what will be the model of PIXFX model? So, y, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus fi plus error. So, here we have introduced the cross-section category, which is the student. So, the test grade is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into the study time plus beta 2, Joe, beta 3, Mark, plus beta 4, Sue. We have not considered Angenio because it becomes a reference category and it will be captured by the constant beta 0. Now, if you want to introduce the effect of time element also, then one of the tests will become the reference category. Here, test 1 is a reference category. So, when we are talking about test 2, it is indicated by 1 and its absence is indicated by 0. Similarly, for test 3, its presence will be indicated by 1 and its absence will be indicated by 0. Test 1 again becomes a reference category. Now, we will change the model. We have introduced the time element here. So, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus fi plus tj plus error term. fi is for the cross section, that is, we are talking about the students, and tj is for the test. So, our formal equation becomes test grade is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 into study time plus beta 2 jo plus beta 3 mark plus beta 4 study uh, su plus b5 test 2 plus beta 6 test 3. The test 1 becomes the reference category and it is captured by the intercept. 
The assumptions of pooled OLSR, it assumes regression coefficients are same for all crash section and time periods. Regressors are non-stochastic, that is, errors are not correlated with the explanatory variables. Error terms are identically and independently distributed, where mean is zero and we are having a constant variance. What are the possibilities of the measurement if we consider the fixed effect models and the pooled OLS model? So the first is, assume that the intercept and the slope coefficients are constant across time and space and the error term captures differences over time and individual cross-section units. You can see the figure here. We are having only one regression equation for the entire panel data. It means that we are running only one equation. The second is, the slope coefficients are constant but the intercept varies over the individuals. You can see here. The slopes are constant, but the intercept varies over the individual. Third, the slopes coefficients are constant, but the intercept varies over the individuals and time. So, the intercept is same, the constant is same, the slopes are different. The first, fourth possibility, all coefficients, that is the intercept as well as the slope coefficients vary over individuals. Fifth possibility. All coefficients, the intercept as well as the slope coefficients vary over individuals and time. You can see in the next slide where I have talked about what is pooled OLS, all intercepts are same, all slopes are same. We are not considering any effect of time element or cross-section element in pooled OLS. In case of fixed effects, all intercepts different based on time or cross-section invariant, all slopes are same. Here. Mean intercept considered of all cross sections, slopes are different. In case of fixed effects, mean different and slopes are different in this case. Should we go for panel data regression or not? For that, we will be running a formal testing. That is, our null hypothesis is panel OLS is appropriate that fixed effect methods or random effects methods, or in other words, no effect of different cross sections on intercept. Now, let us see how we will run this test in eViews. First of all, let me open the file. We have already discussed in my previous videos that when we face such problem of importing the data, we will switch the field to the fixed fields. I'll press the next button. Still, you can see in the year, we are having the hyphen, which we'll have to remove it by dragging and dropping this arrow, dropping this line. Press next. Press next. Now we will have to give the name to this series. So we are indicating this series as observation. Make you, you should remember this that this observation is a cross section identifier. Here we will write down year. Again, you should remember that this is a time element. Y is a dependent variable. X2 is an independent variable x3 is an independent variable. Whenever uh, there is a time element in your data, make sure that you convert this. If it is indicated by character, you convert it into the number. Press next. And press finish. Press now. Now let me show you the option when we have not restructured the data into the panel data. Quick estimate the equation, you will see that the panel option is not getting active. So we will have to restructure the page. You can see here, it is indicating that there are 100 observations. Now let me see how many cross-section units are there. So we are having a company which is G, GM, US, and W Westinghouse. This data has been taken from the book Damodar Gujarati, that is Basic Econometrics by Damodar Gujarati. Now, let us see how many years are there. So, 1935 to 1954. We will have to restructure the data. We will go in PROC, restructure, resize the current page. I will change this to the dated panel. Make sure first and last is on, auto detect mechanism is on, and here we will have to we will have to write which uh, 
is a cross-section identifier. I had already talked about it that the observation is a cross-section identifier. The time element is indicated by year. Click OK. It will give me the formal warning if any missing values are there. Remove this observation, I will say yes. Now it is giving me an information that the 100 observations will be converted into 20 by 4. How? 4 cross-section units are there and 20 years data is there. So 20 into 4. I will say yes. Now you can see the observations which, are, which have been converted into 4. 1935 to 1954 into 4. 20 observations were deleted because of the because they were having a missing values. Now, if you go in quick estimate equation, you will be able to see the panel option, which was not active previously. Now, I'll specify the equation here, y, c, x2, and x3. We have not considered any cross-section data here or the time element here. That is, observation is not considered or even the year is not considered. It is simply, we are running a pulled OLS, common constant method. Click OK. You can see here that the p-value of all the coefficients of, of all the variables is less than 0 0.05. It means that they are highly significant. See, the intercept is minus 63. X2 is 0 0.11, which means that one unit increase in x2 will induce 0.11 increase in y. Similarly, one unit increase in point uh, in x3 will induce 0 0.303 increase in y. r square is 0 0.756, which is quite good. But there is a hitch. The problem is your, your r square is greater than Durbin Watson. Whenever your r square is greater than Durbin Watson, you are facing a problem. It means that the estimated Durbin Watson statistics is quite low, suggesting perhaps that, that there is an autocorrelation in the data. Of course, as we know, a low Durbin Watson value could be due to the specification errors. Specification errors here is we have not considered the individual intercept or slopes, and therefore it is giving me this error. For instance, the estimated model assumes that the intercept value of G, GM, and US and Westinghouse are the same. It cannot be the situation. It also assumes that the slope coefficients of two with x variables are all identical for all the four firms. Obviously, these are very highly restricted assumptions. Therefore, despite its simplicity, the pooled regression may distort the true picture of the relationship between y and x across the four companies. Now, we will have to run the formal test for this. So, whenever you go for panel data analysis, there is a pooled test. The name of the test is Bruce Pagan test. The null hypothesis is pooled OLS is stable. This we have already discussed. Panel OLS is appropriate than fixed effects models. The same null, pooled OLS is better. Alternative is pooled OLS is not better. So we'll have to run the test. For that, again, we will go into eViews. Now I will go in View, fixed effects random test. I'll activate the omitted random effects Lagrange multiplier test. Now you can see here, it gives me, the Bruce Pagan test gives me the p-value for the cross-section data and the time element. The p-value of both this, both of them, are less than 0 0.05. The null hypothesis is no effects are present of cross-section or time sales. The alternative is cross-section effects are there and time element is there. So here, the p-value of both of them is less than 0 0.05. So we conclude. Let me take the output into the word file. And how we'll write this thing formally? Let us see. The null hypothesis is Pulled regression is better, or pulled OLS is stable, or there are no cross-section or time 
time section effects in the model. Fixed effects model or random effects model are better. Where's the output? Now you will, you'll, you will write the thing as as the p value of Bruce Pagan test for cross section. and time element is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis which means that full OLS is not stable or accurate and we will have to consider fixed elements, fixed element model or random effect model in our regression, in our regression. So thank you all of you. This was all about the common constant method or a pooled OLS method in eViews. For more videos on panel data analysis using eViews, kindly refer to my channel. I have already uploaded many videos which are related to panel data analysis using eViews. You can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to press the like button.